Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play Leviathan, the last day of the decade. When we left off last time, we got out of jail, so that's a plus. Uh, Christian paid the guard 1200 to get us out, so twice what he offered us in the first place. Um, and he said that if we want him to, he'll, he'll get Kale out as well, which is a really nice offer. I'm not sure how to take that. I really don't know what to think about Christian at this point. But anyhow, we're back at our home. Here's Adna. I do want to know what she has to say. Where have you been? Uh, let's see if there's anything new here. Beautifully carved elm table covered with matte lacquer. The year of production is discreetly hidden among the patterns. It says 1578. We looked at this before. Magic sand glass covered with thin coast coat of dust. Grams of glimmering golden sand shimmering inside the bulb of smoky glass. These things are made at the the protoplimals of Cherbivo land. Hmm. Bookshelf full of books. The Heart of Celestia, The Gaze from the Red Lamp, The Apprentice, The Greatest Posthumous collection, Edition of the Torin Vitterns Poetry, Gabriel the Protector. Sometimes I think how expensive this collection is. It probably costs fortune. All furniture here is decorated by the Orvid coat of arms. Yep, there's that tree. Christian doesn't like his kin and only has these to maintain his image in society. Yeah, he told us all about the weird rituals they do. Lolf Orvid, who's been around forever, and nobody, everyone hates him but don't know how to kill him. And he forces all of the Orvid descendants to bite his hand and drink his blood. He's, he's a strange fella. Alright. I want to click both of these. But first, let's check in with Edna. Or can we go out here? A faint creak of floorboards is heard outside the door. Looking through the threshold at the bottom of the door, faint spots of yellow light wander the floor. Oh, is someone pacing around out there? Maybe it's one of the servants strolling around with a candle in their hand, or Christian is suffering, suffering from another bout of insomnia. Hmm. Unlike them, some of us here actually want to sleep. Ah, so you're not willing to go out the door to get either Oliver? No. Okay. What's up, Edna? The Vargwill hovers above the floor, murmuring a vaguely familiar melody. It looks funny and scary at the same time. Yeah, you're not trusting her so much anymore, are you, Oliver? Edna, I'm home. Ah? Oh, my sweet master! The walls of your gloomy prison fell aside. You are free again. Indeed. Oh, oh, do you want me to bring you dinner or a cup of hot cocoa? Well, we need to talk. Do I want to get straight down to it, or should I try and check in with... It? Let's... I don't know. I like to approach people from the roundabout way to see if we can... Sometimes ease more information out of them if we don't put them on the defensive. If we act all serious, we need to talk. This could be good because I, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little divided. I almost want to be sort of blunt and confrontational with her and get to the bottom of what's going on. But if she is trying to deceive us, maybe it's better to see if we can catch her off guard. What's up, Edna? Any news? Nothing special, sweetie. The city is preparing for the coming holiday. Markets are open day and night. I don't quite... Cues are full. I always want to say quay, but I'm pretty sure that's actually pronounced like Q. I could be wrong, though. Are full of fisher boats. There's nothing to do here for an honest demon like me. These crazy people go overboard with their crazy holidays. <laughs> what do you want to do, Edna? What holiday are you talking about, Edna? Is there a holiday for the end of the decade? Oh, sugar, don't you know? The last day of the decade is coming. There will be parades and feasts everywhere on the streets. Uh-huh. They'll decorate the tower with ribbons and flowers. Nobles will ride their carriages through the streets and throw gold out the windows like the old traditions say. Hmm. What a great day for brats and cripples. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Sweetie, maybe we can go to the parade and grab some gold, eh? Gold is gold, isn't it? Ah, uh, it is, and I am not averse to grabbing gold, although it's not. I mean, we're from a noble house, so... We probably shouldn't. It would look kind of crappy of us if we did. I think it's more for the lower class people who could actually really benefit from it. Everyone will be at the parade, so how about a small break and enter? I know the nice shop to rob. Edna! Why are you so quiet, sweetie? Yeah, normally normally Oliver would be shouting at her about that. Sugar? Edna, we need to talk. Oh, look at that fish. He's like, uh-oh, he knows. Oliver, what's wrong, sweetie? Don't look at me like that, my sugar. You're freezing me with your cold gaze. What's wrong? Well, let's charisma drink it up here. 
Oliver takes the charisma drink out of his pocket and drinks it in one huge gulp. I look so pretty. That's kind of strange. Edna, may I lean on your frankness? Oh, sweetie, ask anything you want. You know that, don't you? Listen, Edna, I don't want to insult you, but there was a time you served me better than this. Sugar, I... I am... My sweet Oliver, I... Please, no drama, Edna. It's not an accusation. I just want to know what's happening. Good job, Oliver. That's right. We don't want to put her on the defensive. We just want to get to the bottom of whatever this is. I care about you. Don't you understand? Ooh, good call. I do like Edna, and I am going to be a little bit heartbroken if she's betraying us. And I think that Oliver... I mean, she's been with us ten years. I think that he needs to be nicer to her more and let her know that she does matter to us. I mean... I don't consider her just, like, my demon slave or whatever. She's a friend. When you speak like that, my sweet master, I can't refuse you. Christian knew everything about my investigation, so I can only conclude that somebody told him all of my findings, and you do seem like the logical person to have done it, Edna. He knew about that ring of my mother's. He knew about that incident with Mitchell, but how? Well... It was you, nobody else. At the archive, at the jail, everywhere. Anytime Christian came to help me, you had just conveniently been around. Listen, Edna, I know the truth, and now I want to know the reason. Well, come on. This doesn't have to be a battle. <gasps> My sweetie, I am not your demon anymore and cannot serve you as I did before. What happened? How did someone subvert our bond? How do we fix it? Christian is my master now. Freaking, he stole my demon! How did he steal my demon? Oh, I'm really upset at Christian about this. I'm not blaming Edna. I have a feeling that there's nothing she can do to control it. She's got to obey whatever demon magic there is, and she's got to serve whoever owns the bond or whatever, but this is my freaking demon. I made her. She's mine. She's my friend. She looks out for me. Christian, you back off. You got your own freaking shadow. He makes me snoop on you and demands that I tell him everything. I bet she doesn't want to, either. I knew that. But how can that be possible, Edna? Is there a way to claim a demon who already has a master? I've never heard of that happening before. Oh, you know who would probably know, although it'll be a dicey conversation. Julia. Because she's a master of demonology. I mean, that could have been part of the ruse of her being the new student at the academy, but I have a feeling she probably really does know a thing or two about it. You know, sweetie, the right is irreversible. It is true. There is a way to re-summon the demon by simply killing them. The one who summons them will become the master. Wait, so he killed you and resummoned you? How did it happen? How did it happen, Nada? How long have you been serving him? Three years or so, sweetie. I'm tired of thrashing about to him and then to you, only to do it all over again. I imagine. I think I remember when it happened. He disappeared for a week or so, and then came back. Yes, yes, sugar. Your guardian is so clever, you know. He bought a basket of rabbits and carried it to the cellar. Oh, and then, like, you went to eat them or something, and he gotcha? Oh, those warm living rabbits. So delicious. So crunchy. So he goes down the ladder as I'm flying behind him. I felt a strange anxiety, but I didn't think much of it. Then, Walmart got me. Uh, Wellmouth? What Wellmouth are you talking about? The Shadow. Oh, it has a name. Shadows are like the demons, but not the same. They have their families, their own history. And this one has a name, Wellmouth. Well, I mean, her name's Adna, so I suppose it makes sense he'd have a name. They say there was an ancient contract that bound shadows to the Orvid bloodline. They connected somehow during ancient times. I heard about the contract, Adna. What can you tell me about Wellmouth? I do know a little, but I'm scared to find out anything else. He's scary. Mad. I don't know how Christian gets along with him. Alright, so your master is now Christian, obviously. So how do you like your new master, Edna? Oh, Edna gets gloomy. It's hard to tell, sweetie. A demon falls in love with their master, even if the master is questionable. So she doesn't... Well, this makes me feel bad, because how much did she really care about Oliver? And how much of it is just part of being a demon in the bound... The bonds they're forced to live with. Live with. I mean, I want to take her back. She's our freaking demon. This is our Edna. We have to look out for her. She's not a toy for a Christian to use. But would it really make her happy to be our demon instead? 
Of course, I can't judge, but Christian is not that kind of man. He's probably a good person, I'll say. He loves you, sweetie. He cares. I kind of get the feeling that he genuinely does, and this is a bit of reassurance on that point, I guess, but even if he does love us, that doesn't make him not dangerous. I'm sure his story about the dog. I bet he really did love that dog, but he still snapped and killed it. He could still snap and kill us. Sometimes he thinks of you all night and then lies to you when he says he can't sleep because of insomnia. All right, well, what should we do? I want you back. What are we going to do, Edna? I thought I had my own demon. Somebody I can trust, but now... Well, sweetie, just say less. If Christian asks me, I'll tell him everything I know. His spell has power over me, so... Yeah, so she doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to spy on Oliver at all. She's trying not to. Look at her colluding with us to try to find a way. Okay, so she has to tell him. Because there's no way for her to avoid telling him. But, yeah. We just can't confide in her. Yes? Sure, he asks me about you every day. Your studies, your friends, your women. Especially women. Is what he wants to know. And also your health. He often speaks about your health. Why does he need me healthy? Does he have some kind of plan for me? I think he does. Health? Yep. He always says, Never let Oliver falter on his way or weird things like that. What does that mean? Obviously, Christian meant something different. Yeah, d oh wait, don't let him falter on his way. So is Christian kind of thinking the same lines of the tree? He doesn't want me to be a bad guy? I missed you, sugar. Well, I miss you too, Adna, and I want to take you back. How do I do it? The memory remains, you know. We had a lot of fun together, didn't we, sweetie? I got used to you. What should we do next, Adna? I can't trust you anymore. I hope you understand why. No, this is the wrong... Okay, we can't trust her. That's true. But Oliver, what we need to be thinking about is how do we get our demon back? Just by speaking to you right now, I think I'm making a huge mistake. There's a good chance that this conversation will be relayed to Christian. The Varguil thinks. My sweetie, don't worry. A demon is made to do only as asked. Ask them a question, and they'll tell you just what you asked for. No more, no less. Is there any reason to worry? Tell me, is there any reason or not? Christian never asked me whether you know my secret or not. We are not in danger unless he asks. Alright. Not very assuring. It's something, though. Don't worry, my lord. Everything will be alright, I assure you. And don't be mad at me. I am on your side, sugar. You know what would be really smart, what would be an awesome thing to do, Oliver, is if we found a way to take her back, but let her pretend to keep serving Christian so that he didn't know. Then we could do some snooping on him. Edna disappears. Oh, and the phone's ringing. Who's calling? Oh, Kale. Kale. Kale, is that you? Are you still in prison? It's me, buddy. Kale? I'm in a world of shit, Oliver. I know, and it's largely our fault. If Even if we can't help him immediately to get out of it, Oliver, we need to at least say something nice to him. It's pretty crappy already that you were too afraid to call him because everything you thought you could say was insufficient. He still needs to hear from you. Deep, deep shit, you know. Sorry, you have got involved in all of this because of me. You weren't guilty of anything. Nobody's guilty, Oliver. We've just got dragged in. You and me. Like it was in our childhood. Or like it was. Yes, when we came to Aizen and you pulled me out of the whirlpool. Do you remember? You grabbed my hand and pulled me back. And now I want to pull you out, too. You're the only one who wants that, buddy. What? But your father... Oh, forget about him. Somebody told him. He came and asked, is it true? I said yes, and he answered, then you deserve this. Man, your father sucks, Kale. I'm sorry. What a crud. Oliver, never say things like that about my father. Okay, fine. I understand. I understand. He's your father, and you don't really want other people bad-mouthing him. But you deserve better, Kale. But Kale... Oh, I know. Anyway... I want you to say some words you used to say in our childhood. We always got into trouble, didn't we? That's right. And when everything turned out bad and punishment seemed inevitable, you patted my shoulder and said, We'll get through it. And we will. We will find a way through this, Kale. Yes, yes, right. See, we're helping to bolster him up a little bit right here. Just He just needed to hear that someone's on his side. Kale laughs. Feels easier to bear everything that's happened, like it was back in the days. 
But now it sounds like useless cheering, because I'm in real trouble now. Sorry. A sort of noise is heard in the receiver. Are you here, buddy? I've got a visitor. And they say it's a girl. Call back later. Well, who's going to see you? Okay, hold on. Kayla hangs up. Well, who's calling him? Hmm. Okay, still not willing to go outside. So we can sit in the chair. Or I don't want to go to sleep yet. Let's sit in the chair. Something glitters between the cushions. Ooh, loose change. Ah, gold. It's always a delight to find some money. Even 13 gold coins. Oh, yeah. Hey, every little bit. Anything else in there? A big sofa padded with green leather. It's a bit worn out, but still seems luxurious. Oh, I didn't mean to click that again. Okay. Uh, I guess to bed. Well... Can we get a hold of any- we got to talk to Kale, that was good. Can we reach Darina? Nope. We need to get, well, Lou Otto, but really, uh, Quincy's phone number. He's part of our group now. Although we need- and we didn't tell Darina the truth about him, and we really need to do that, too. Alright, I'll see what we get. Oliver changes his clothes and lays down on the bed. Here I was thinking that yesterday was a really crazy day. I know, it's just getting more and more nuts. I never imagined that today would be much worse. And then tomorrow is going to be Zarina's last day. Before she goes off wherever. Oliver hears faint chimes through his sleep. Oop, someone's calling. Wake up. It could be Kale. What's this? Oliver. The Book of Leviathan. Oliver Vertran, we need to talk. Whose voice is it? Hey, who are you? Where are you? Oh, man, I do not want to talk to this thing. Glad to see you again, Oliver. It is strange for you not to recognize my voice. Why... Why are you a creepy book talking to me? And who are you? Is it the tree? If we're sleeping... What do you want to talk about? About your way, Oliver. Your steps towards the darkness. I thought I was doing pretty good. The tree said I was alright. Steps toward the darkness? Oh, this tree you're talking to is not what it seems. Mmm. For some reason, I trust this book way more than the tree. This thing we at least know some of the story behind. That tree just appeared out of nowhere. Excuse me? A picture is worth a thousand words. Do you understand? See for yourself. Oh, what, do you have, do you have something within you about the tree? I have no idea what you're talking about. The book vanishes, turning into trails of smoke. Seek him to understand everything. Why? I don't... I really don't want to be talking to the Book of Aberrants. Book disappears. Now this is... Because we're... Oh, there's the tree. I was going to say. Oliver. Hey there, gross tree. How's it going? Now we meet again on the edge of the deepest meanings of humanity. Revelation fills me up. The time draws near. The time for what? Well, first, tell me what my aberration level is. It should be pretty pretty decent. Your soul is clean and clear like a raindrop. Your aberration level is zero. Excellent. You deserve a little gift. Yeah. You will find it in your bag tomorrow, young Vertran. Thanks, tree. Got it, tree. I'll keep an eye on my aberration level. Let it be. Perhaps there is something you wish to know. Um... I, I want to follow up about Revelation, but I kind of want to... Even though it's a, a nasty thing to do, let's read some lines. Recently you showed me how to read people's minds. Can I do it again? The tree starts to swish with its dry branches, and this noise sounds a lot like laughter. It's rather amusing to hear you ask for my permission over a thing like that. Soon you'll learn to do it by yourself. Any mind would be open to you except the minds of a sorcerer or the dead. Well, so we shall begin. Whose thoughts do you want to see? Oh, man. All of them. Most is Oh, boy. I really want to know what's going on with Lou. Although, from that paper we found, it sounds like he might just be a run-of-the-mill scam artist. I am very curious to know Julia's thought. And Mat well, Matris is a big threat. It could be very beneficial to know what he's thinking. But, I don't know. Julia, I feel like a lot of things might hinge on Julia. Like, potentially, we could make... Maybe, it might be a long shot, but maybe we could make some kind of ally out of her? 
I'd like to know what Julia Raider thinks about. Easy. Close your eyes, young Bertrand, and you will see. A blurred surrounding with a female figure appears in front of Oliver's eyes. The figure slowly gains clarity. There's no doubt that it's Julia. Matris is predictably vile. I knew that he was definitely going to intervene. He lacks restraint when money is part of the picture. No, he's, he's certainly corrupt. The smell of gold makes him stupid. It's obvious that Matris is confident. He thinks he's a big fish. Now the big fish has eaten my bait. Oh boy, that doesn't sound good. Turns out that Julia played Matris like she played me recently. Yeah, she's pretty clever. I wonder if there was a moment when she didn't pretend. Doesn't seem like it. Are you sad, young Virgin? You didn't like what you saw. Well, I never expected to like it. Your sadness is a result of disappointment. The revelation will probably give you the power to strengthen your resolve against such. I don't... I'm not really sad that she was pretending. Actually, I have a lot of respect for her. She's kind of a pretty awesome character. I mean, she's... Like, even though even though now it seemed like things were going so bad with her, with Matris intervening and letting me go. No, that's still part of her plan. I want... Ooh, is she gunning for Matris's job, maybe? Is she Maybe she's planning to expose his corruption with this whole thing starting. Maybe she's going to pile it all together. She's got the Mitchell Raider case, and then she's going to be able to show how Matris was corrupt in finding the actual killer, because he was able to be bribed. And then we gave her the Christian Orvid case, and that in her pocket seems like that would be a... that would go a long way towards getting her promoted, because that's a pretty big freaking deal. So... No, go her. She's awesome. I'm really impressed. She's very intelligent. She's got a lot of guile. She's figuring things out. I like her. She's a wily one. Okay. What revelation? Revelation fills me up. Ooh, but I want to read more minds if we can. Alright. If we can do all of them, that'll be great. Let's take a look at Lou next. Can you show me what's happening in Lou Otto's mind? You mean Quincy? Yeah. Yep, I forgot about that. It was so hilarious, Virgin Sarah. The ocean in your head flashed with a ruby red color when you saw that wanted poster. What ocean are you talking about, Tree? But it's hard to describe, young Virgin. It is a picture. It's how your mind looks like inside. Okay, I'd better see how Quincy's mind looks like. Of course, of course. Take a look translucent figure of Quincy appears in front of Oliver. That old coot went nuts. Why does he hate me so much? Hmm. Come on, ask for more, you limp son of a bitch. And you, Jonathan. Dumbass. I remember for sure. You ordered three for ten, not two for twenty. Lame ass. You're trying to frame me, you redhead crud. Hmm? What is this all about? Completely bombed with the Lautners. The profit from Darina is a trifle, just enough to cover the debts. Why well, you gotta scam Darina? They say Neglin's daughter is rich and hot. I should try her next. What a shameless bastard. Are you sad, young Virgin? You didn't like what you saw. I'm not really surprised. Didn't expect to like that either. Alright, I know, revelation, but first, let's get all the minds read. Okay, this time we'll hit Matris. I'd like to see what Matris use things. Not today, young Virgin. His mind is too strong for you. Oh, bummer. Any other minds you wish to see? Well, I would like to see Mentor Craze, but I'm wondering if he's going to be too strong as well. Can you show me the thoughts of Craze? I told you clearly, Oliver. There is no way to read the mind of a dead person. What do you mean? What are you talking about, Tree? I just want to see- I just talked to him. Wait, is Craze dead? What? I, I like Craze! Yes, young virgin. He died last evening. What? Well, what? From what? The academy guard found the dead body in the classroom. Oh my god. What happened to him? Who killed him? I feel terrible. He was old, Oliver. Someday it would have happened regardless- That doesn't make it not sad to learn about now. Everyone has to die someday, Tree. Well, apparently everyone except for the Plague King and Low Forvid, but pretty much everybody else. It doesn't mean that when they die we're just like, eh, had to happen anyhow. No, it, it still hurts when you lose people. Jeez. Any other minds? No? 
No. I guess I have to pick one. Um, I'll hit Matrix again, because that should be a short conversation. Or no, he's just gonna bring back here, Julia. Okay. What happened? What happened to Grace? Is it because of one of the people I called? Because he gave me the numbers? Okay, well, I guess it's time to hear about this revelation. Tell me, Tree. Is that baby under your bark a revelation? Oh, somehow I didn't even realize. Yeah, this is like a, a womb here. Can you explain the meaning of it? I just saw stuff pulsating was like, oh, that's gross. <laughs> I didn't notice the... The fetus within. Do you know the story of your family, Oliver? Not quite. My grandpa told me the story of Vertrans, but I can barely remember a thing. Actually, I asked you a question. Listen. It is an old story, but it's still alive even now. Here, under the entangling roots, among moles and worms, it breezes. It lives. What does? Hunting demons was not the original occupation of the Vertrans. Ages ago, your ancestors were experts in witchery and farming. A curved blade is placed on the Vertrans' coat of arms, but almost no one knows what this sign means. It is a scythe. A scythe, not a sword. Oh, because we were farmers. Years ago, one of the Vertran women got pregnant, and on a cold winter's night, gave birth to a child with icy blue eyes. The father gave him a rare name, Selvik. That means sentenced for an early death in an ancient language. An unkind, evil name. A curse, not a blessing. Yeah, why would you name your child that? Nobody would call their beloved child by that name. Your father probably expected the boy to die at an early age. But Selvik survived. Wait, what do you mean, my father? I thought we were talking about way back when. He grew up a weak and plain youngster. The mother felt pity for him, secretly harbored hatred toward him. Oh my god! The father just felt hatred. Well, his parents really sucked. Times were hard, and the winters were harder. One day, Selvik's mother froze to death in a broken carriage, and then he was left with only his father, who straight up hated him and had no pity. The father sent Selvik to his brother, and his brother threw his nephew out after two months. Selvik had become an outcast and began wandering from home to home, but he found no home at all. No virtuans wanted to take him. It seemed like they tried to acquit his cruel name, to kill him with indifference. Well, yeah, it sounds like all of my ancestors are terrible people. Finally, Selvik found a camp of demon hunters and joined them. After a few years, the decade started, and the Vertrans were almost extinct, burned to ashes in a flame of the decade. Oh, so we used to be vulnerable to the decade, huh? Pestilence covered the southwest of the land, mudblood clans left their mansions and domains behind and rushed north to save their lives from the plague. They tried to escape death, but it followed them on the backs of their horses, in plagued bales with belongings and poisoned provisions. In the bloody vomit of their diseased, doomed servants, in blackened coins with the king's face. Do you know who stopped the epidemic? Demon hunters. They kept northern borderlands closed until the last fugitive died of sores and thirst. How symbolic. The decade killed the killers. The rotten flesh husked and peeled loose from their bones. This is how a new branch of Vertrans hived off the old kin. Wow. You are the descendant of Selvik, Vertrand, the true ancestor of the family history and glory. The outcast one is the line of all the noble Selviks today, eh? Er, noble Selviks, noble Vertrans. I've never heard this story before. Maybe you'll never hear it again. This is a tale from ancient times, and it seems to have been forgotten. I'll remember it. Forgotten about. Is the tree something to do with Selvik? Looks like the tree has nothing to say anymore. Let me wake up, tree. What well, didn't answer what this baby is all about? As you wish. See you, young Oliver. I've spoken to the tree. Now I have to understand what the book wanted from me. The tree begins to fade into darkness. Yeah, Oliver, we got a lot of... Really weird things going on in our life. Oliver opens his eyes. Hmm. It's suspiciously quiet outside. Ah, it's Sunday. Wonder what time it is now. Oliver checks the phone. Seventeen missed calls! <gasps> Kale! 
must have slept so soundly that none of those calls woke me. I have to call back. Uh, yeah. But I have to look at this because it wasn't an option before. Candles seem to have been blown out. Christian must have come to my room and did that while I was asleep. Everything's become so complicated. Rays of pink light glimmer against the book covers. When everything is over, I will sit down in my armchair and read the presents once more. Soft carpet with small gray and blue patterns. There's an orvid tree with golden branches seen in the plexus of blue lines. There's also the sharp razor, the symbol of virtues on it. Alright, let's call Kale. And then Darina, because she's leaving today, so we gotta talk to her too. Oh. So what did the tree give me? You know, I don't remember how many potions I had before. And I gotta figure out this red light to open this box too. Okay, we looked at that. Alright. That looks like it's for later. Okay, let's call... Kale. Oh, come on! Long beeps. Mm -hmm. Kale, answer! Short beeps. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something terrible probably happened to him. Kale always answers when I call. Something has happened. Something terrible. I'm pretty sure they took his phone away because of Julia. It's a pity that I don't have her number. This bitch deserves to know what I think about her. I need to call everyone who might be connected to this case. No time to wait. I must help Kale. Alright. Uh, we are... I'm gonna call Darina, though. Hello, hello! Oliver? Yep. Darina, do you know what's happened to Kale? What's wrong with him? I know. Maybe he did what you asked of him? What I asked? What do you mean? He confessed to a murder. <gasps> no! No! What? I, I never asked him to do anything like that. Darina, don't you... What are you talking about? Recently you told me that you would never help Kale if that means you go to jail. I never said that. It was sort of cute, but I got it. In fact, I've got your work done for you, and now... Darina! Okay, and now you're yelling at me. Great. You know what? That was the last time I... Oliver throws the phone onto the floor. Oliver, we gotta get to the bottom of this. A sharp chime and a loud bang is heard. The phone screen has a long and wide crack. Great. Hell no. Excellent. Ugh. The phone screen is split and a huge glowing crack crosses it. Well, now we can't call anybody. The phone is broken. I can probably receive incoming calls, but there's no way I can call someone myself. You shouldn't have thrown it, Oliver. You need to calm down and get to the bottom of what's going on. Okay. Well, let's step out in the hall anyway. You're finally awake, Master. Edna, Edna, we need help. Where are you going to, sweetie? It is Sunday. Well, I can't tell you. What was that noise just now? It was like someone broke glass. I broke my phone. Oh, I know. It is a fad among rich boys. Who's angered you so much? Tarina made a huge mistake. Kale's in danger because of her. I became furious and threw my phone at the floor, so now I can't make any calls. What you going to do, sugar? I'll speak to Christian first. Then I'll go to the city to meet up with Darina and help Kale. Edna, is Christian... He's not at home, sweetie. He got up early and went to the city. Some urgent business, I suppose. He's at the bank? Good. Listen, we're heading to Croystem now. You'll fly to Christian and ask him to solve the problem with Kale. And you, sweetie. I'll find Darina. Come on, Edna. All right, it sounds like a plan, at least. The carriage starts going. Why didn't you have your breakfast? Not even a cup of warm milk. Well, there's urgent things going on, Edna. I don't want to eat, Edna. You know, sweetie, your guardian came to your room before he left. He came to watch you while you were sleeping. And did he do something? Did he make calls while I was sleeping or something? You see, I feel like maybe I'm missing something. Why would Kale confess? 
Is it? I mean, we got mad at Darina. What did she? Did she convince him to take the fall for me? That that was somehow what I wanted, or is there something else going on? Really? Sure, sugar. He does that quite often. That's kind of creepy, actually. Why the hell are we going so slowly? Oh, sweetie, the horses are running as fast as they can. It will take ten minutes or so to get to Christem. Oh, the phone in Oliver's pocket starts to ring. All right, what's up, Darina? Uh, it rings, but I can't answer the call. Just great. Darina probably thinks that I'm offended and ignored her call because of it. It's all right, sugar. Let her think whatever she wants. Well, I don't really want... I want to get her on my side so we can work together and try and actually help Kale. And it's not going to go as smoothly if she thinks I'm pissed off at her. Teach that stupid girl a lesson. I, it's not what I want to do, actually. The phone starts to ring again. Oh my gosh, I really want this call. Julia? What the hell does she need from me? Beware of that, Vixen, sweetie. I have no idea what sort of dirty trick she plans. She, I know, but... She's dangerous, but she could be helpful, too. Possibly. You know, Julia's got a kind of machine that detects demonic bonds. What? You don't belong to me anymore. That's why that thing showed nothing. I wonder what would have happened if you still were my demon. Now, that's a good point. All's well that ends well, sugar. The phone rings again. Everyone's calling me. Oh my gosh, this is going to drive me insane. Today is a phone call day. What do you think, Edna? Who might it be? I don't know, sweetie. Well, maybe I know. What do you mean? Just a guess, sugar. Could be one of the Orvids. Really? Why would they call me? Orvids? But why? I should have told you earlier. Uh oh. Tell me, tell me what? Yesterday, when you were at the academy, a courier came to Christian with a letter from a patriarch. <gasps> They're gonna want me to go and bite that guy's hand. Christian was really frightened, walking around his office all pale like a ghost, murmuring something. He refused to speak to me, but I overheard his conversation with his shadow. He said, Too much unwelcome attention for shadows, but it is too late to fix it all. Wellmouth proposed him to leave the city, but Christian shook his head and said, There's nowhere to go. The Orvids will find and kill us anyway. You've been guarding me for years, but now you are my biggest problem. Now that is interesting. Guarding him... What, from other Orvids? Or is this to do with the information we gave Julia, and she's putting pressure on him and the other Orvids found out? What do you think, sweetie? I suppose everything is about those missing children. It's a crime that Christian is afraid of. Oh. Here we are. I'll speak to your guardian, then I'll find you, sugar. Okay, let's do it. Oh, Oliver steps out of the carriage and glances around. I need to find somebody to call Zarina. Well, she might be willing to. We helped her before, although she got mad the last time we talked to her. And we don't have craze to ask now. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and wind the episode down here. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back next time. I think we're going to try talking to... Well, I I want to talk to her because she might... Oh, there might be someone inside. We'll talk to her first and then we'll go inside. Um, and Maybe we can find like another student there who'd be willing to call. We'll figure something.